Howard D. Schultz is a businessman and novelist from the United States. From 1986 to 2000 and again from 2008 to 2017, he was the chairman and chief executive officer (CEO) of Starbucks Coffee Company. From 2001 to 2006, Schultz also controlled the Seattle Supersonics basketball team. In today's video, we are going to go over the Starbucks CEO, Howard Schultz. So without further ado, let's get into it. Humble Beginnings Schultz, 65, was born in Brooklyn, New York and brought up in hard scrabble, Canarsie, in government-sponsored housing. His father, Fred, never finished high school and worked a variety of blue-collar occupations such as truck drivers, manufacturing workers, and taxi drivers. He never earned more than $20,000 a year, and with three kids to support, Fred could never afford to buy a house. In his book, Pour Your Heart Into It, How Starbucks Established a Company One Cup at a Time, Schultz describes his father as an honorable guy who worked diligently, played basketball with his kids on weekends, and adored the Yankees but his father had other aspects to him. On Sunday, Schultz informed 60 Minutes that his father was physically violent. In his book, Schultz also referred to him as a beaten man who tried to fit into the institution, but the framework crushed him. He had never been allowed to get out of his hole and enhance his life since he had low self-esteem. Fred was unable to work after his father fractured his ankle at work in 1961. That means he wasn't paid. His mother was seven months pregnant and unable to work at the time. When the collection agencies called, Schultz and his siblings were told to pick up the phone and claim their parents were not home. Our family had no revenue, no health care coverage, no workers compensation, and nothing to rely on, Schultz said. He didn't realize he'd become a businessman and a job creator at the time, but he writes, I believed in my heart that if I were ever in a situation where I could make a real difference, I wouldn't leave people alone. Schultz moved on to graduate from Northern Michigan University, where he was a full football scholarship recipient. He would become the first individual in his family to graduate from college. To my parents, I had won a major prize, a diploma, he writes. Schultz spent three years with Xerox in sales and marketing before joining Starbucks. He later became vice president and general manager of Hammerplast USA, a Swedish kitchenware firm, rising through the ranks. In 1982, Schultz relocated from New York to Seattle to work as the company's director of operations and marketing. The corporation had only four stores at the time. Schultz visited Italy in 1983 and was impressed by how the espresso cafes in Milan serve as a location for people to interact and spend time together far outside the house or the business. He quit Starbucks to launch his coffee house chain, Il Giornale. Schultz returned to Starbucks in 1987 to purchase the coffee business with the help of a few financiers. He also assumed the role of CEO. There were 17 store locations at the time. Schultz led the corporation through rapid expansion while staying socially conscientious. Schultz pledged in 1988 to provide health insurance to qualified full and part-time staff and all domestic partners of staff. Starbucks began providing bean equity, or company stock, in 1991, allowing employees to become partners in the firm. Of course, he's had his share of scandal. Schultz implemented a proposal in 2015 to have Starbucks baristas print raced together on Starbucks paper cups. Instead, the program sparked mockery and downright animosity towards employees and leadership. As per the New York Times, Mr. Schultz discontinued the program within days, stating that he didn't expect universal applause. In April, when a Starbucks manager in Philadelphia called the cops on two black people who were expecting to start a business conference and use the restroom, but had not purchased anything, Starbucks was publicly chastised. As a result, Schultz eventually closed all Starbucks outlets in the United States for racial discrimination training. As a firm, we had an ethical obligation to disclose this, Schultz acknowledged CBS 60 Minutes. Starbucks now has about 7,000 outlets in 77 countries and the corporation employs over 350,000 people. A leading voice. Schultz is courteous in deflecting attention. Starbucks has been in operation for more than 45 years. You realize I'm not placing myself in the same category as Tom Brady or any individual who has been a cornerstone of success in the team game, Schultz tells CNBC. This is a group sport. It's always been a group effort. I've received more credit than I deserve, 
the company has the largest number of outstanding leaders. Nonetheless, Schultz is often regarded as the brains behind most Starbucks successes and growth into a global powerhouse. He has received numerous honors from different renowned institutes. In addition, he is a best-selling author. Following the success of his first book, Schultz went on to publish For the Love of Country, What Our Veterans Can Teach Us About Citizenship, Heroism, and Sacrifice, 2014, and Onward, How Starbucks Fought for Its Life Without Surrendering Its Soul, 2015. His new book, From the Ground Up, A Quest to Reimagine America's Promise, was launched on Monday and who knows, maybe he'll be a presidential contender soon. Schultz concedes that his journey has included a touch of luck, but it has also been the consequence of a fiery resolve and unrelenting persistence. In Pour Your Heart Into It, he says, I willed it to occur. I took control of my life, learned from everyone I could, grasped every chance I could, and built my success step by step. Schultz remarked on his lowly beginnings when announcing his retirement from Starbucks. In June, he stated, I still feel like a kid from Brooklyn who grew up in public apartments. I am experiencing the American dream, and I continue to have hopes for the company and you. Vacation home in Hawaii's Hualalei. Starbucks billionaire Howard Schultz has settled on a $25 million eight-bedroom property in Hawaii's Hualalei District Tourist Area's premium Four Seasons Complex. The 1.8-acre estate listed on the MLS in late January for $33 million. William Jenke, the former CEO of Wells Fargo Financial Advisor, was the seller. Harold Clark of Luxury Big Island, a high-end brokerage, assisted both the buyer and seller but refused to provide any specifics. Other officials, though, confirmed the agreement. Schultz's new home has a total living area of 10,641 square feet, while Lale has two golf courses as well as other sports and seaside clubs and swimming pools. Its southern neighbor is Kukio, Hawaii, one of the most exclusive enclaves, where Michael Dell's 18,500 square foot Raptor Mansion sits on prime property. This is the finest opportunity on Hualalei for a house right now, Clark said of the house, which was the resort's largest commercial property. This is the best it gets. Schultz's house is situated back from the Pacific Ocean on the edge of the resort's golf course, panoramas of mountains, volcanic rock, and coconut trees. It has nine baths, a playroom, a media room, a jacuzzi, and an infinity-edged pool. The house spans two lots with the main house on one and a sequence of four independent pods from the other. The walls of the house are made of teak. The property first appeared as a pocket off the MLS offering late last year before adding to the multiple listing earlier this year. Schultz became a billionaire through his ownership of Starbucks. Friends such as David Geffen have asked him to run for the presidency on the Democratic ticket. But Schultz has stated that he is not willing for the time being. In February, he was featured on the cover of Time magazine. He could not be reached for comment on this transaction right away. This home is worth $25 million he spent for it since the floors are accented with teak, giving it a more elegant appearance. Howard acquired the property after it was listed on multiple listing agencies previously this year. So, there you have it. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. Until next time.